Hello, everyone. Welcome to our eLotus webinar today. My name is Donna, and I will be your host and your moderator for today's class. For over two decades, eLotus has been your trusted source for TCM information, and we offer the largest selection of online CU courses with over 3,000 CE hours. So if you are new to eLotus, remember to sign up for an eLotus account and receive a free 1CU course as a welcome gift. This offer is valid for new accounts only. TCM is our passion, and what better way to express this than through our free TCM resources. If you haven't visited our eLotus Core website, now is a great time to do so. You can touch up on your master dome points, learn the locations and indications. Plus, as a Gold Pass member, you'll also have premium access to our core content. This weekend, we'll be holding a two-day training on Dome's acupuncture with Dr. Henry McCann. So hopefully, we can see you there. And as a quick reminder to all, we will be hosting a Watch It Free eight-hour training each month until the end of 2020. This includes this webinar coming up on Saturday, October 3rd. So stay tuned until the end of today's webinar for details on how to sign up. Okay, so that takes care of everything. Here's a quick introduction to Henry McCann. Henry is the author of Pricking the Vessels, Bloodletting Therapy in Chinese Medicine, and the co-author with Dr. Han Gort. Gorge Ross by of Practical Atlas of Dong's Acupuncture. He is a faculty member at the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine in New York, where he teaches medical classics. He also teaches for the doctoral degree programs at the Oregon College of Oriental Medicine, along with other doctoral degree programs in the U.S. Okay, let's go ahead and welcome Dr. Henry McCann. And Henry, if you can do a quick sound test on your end, and I'll also stop my share here so that you can share your PowerPoint on your end. Got it, so we'll do a sound test here. Uh, if everyone can uh, hear me, let's let me know. I can hear you. All right, <laughs> good, all right. Sounds good then, I think we'll, get, we'll, we'll do that then. All right, so let's bring up the PowerPoint. This should be the final version that you have all in the handouts. Okay, can we see the PowerPoint? I think we're, Seeing it's it okay. perfect. Good. Good. All right. And uh, Donna, I'll let you uh, also, you know, collate questions. Uh, I may be able to watch some of the chat as we go through, but I may not see all the questions as they come up. Um, so, it, you know, Donna, you can uh, co uh, collect some questions and we'll leave some time near the end to uh, do a brief uh, question and answer session as well. So uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for taking your uh, lunch hour or your earlier or later hour, depending on where in the world you're located. For me, it's a late lunch hour, but that's that's good. So today we're gonna do a, a brief introduction to a couple of the topics actually. So this weekend we're doing a lecture on uh, Dong's acupuncture for the care of the aging adult. Uh, we can call it geriatric medicine or the aging adult. Then we're going to be doing one on stress and digestive disorders, um, two interesting topics. And I think two topics that are relevant to just about all of us who are in uh, clinical practice. Um, so today, what I figured we would do for the hour is try to at least tackle two of those uh, topics and in, in a short introduction. Um, and this will hopefully be a short introduction to some aspects of Dong's acupuncture. Uh, for those of you who are brand new to Dong's acupuncture, some of the ideas will be a little bit different and hopefully interesting. And then for those of you who have been, uh, are familiar with Dong's acupuncture, have worked with the system before, hopefully this will be a good review of some concepts. So let's see if I can navigate through here. I think I can. Good. So I'm assuming that uh, most of you who are here have at least heard about uh, Dong's acupuncture. But just as a very brief introduction, um, Dong's acupuncture is a family lineage of practice. The last person in the family to practice this method was this person who we call, uh, you know, Master Dong or Dong Shurfu or Dong Teacher, Master, uh, Teacher Dong. Um, he lived from 1916 to 1975. Uh, his ma the majority of his life was spent uh, after the the war in China, after the civil war that uh, that really sort of tore apart China in the late 1930s to the 1940s. After that time period, he relocated to Taiwan. And some of his history we've covered in other more of the history we've covered in other of the lectures on on the Dong family system. 
We also cover the, the history briefly in my book on the topic uh, that Dr. Ross and I wrote together. And then most other books on Dong's acupuncture will have a brief history. So the thing that's sort of different about Dong's acupuncture, it is a family lineage of, of practice that sort of developed independent of the modern TCM movement in China today. Uh, and when I make distinct di distinctions between Dong's acupuncture and TCM acupuncture or other acupuncture, I will just use the term TCM acupuncture. And that's with no risk, no disrespect to other types of acupuncture. Um, but we'll see that there are definitely some different characteristics of Dong's acupuncture from either TCM, modern Japanese, Korean, other types of system that are based on what we'll just maybe call conventional acupuncture. So, one of the things that's most obvious about the system for people who are new to the system is this use of extra points or points that are uh, that are different from the conventional channel points from the TCM other conventional channel points. Clearly, there are only so many spots on the body where we can apply a needle for therapeutic intervention. So there's going to be some overlap between conventional acupuncture points and Dong's points, but certainly there's going to be some quite different points in Dong system. So we're gonna look at a group of points as just a lens that we can start exploring some of the concepts today. So since the topic of this coming weekend is uh, Dong's acupuncture for, for care of the aging adult for geriatric medicine and then for stress and digestive disorders, what I figured we'd do is look at a common condition and some of the points for those conditions that fall into both categories and that we'll probably cover in both days. So I just extracted one slide. This is a, uh, one slide that was taken out of this coming weekend's lecture. So this is a, a common problem that we see in older patients, uh, and it's obviously a digestive problem. So we're going to look at the treatment of chronic gastritis or chronic stomach disorders. So here we have a list of possible points that we can potentially choose from, and we'll, we'll, we'll go more into why choosing one point over the other, perhaps a little more this weekend when we have time to go more in depth into the topics. So the first point we have on the list here is gate of metal, menjin is gate of metal, which is a point that overlaps stomach 43. So those of you who are familiar with Dong's acupuncture uh, have probably seen this point before. Uh, I Stomach 43 has to be one of my favorite points to use in the clinic for a wide variety of conditions. Um, but we'll talk more about that one this weekend. So I want to go on to the second point here, which is the Zu Santong. Zu Santong is, it means the leg three penetrations. And we'll show you the name uh, in Chinese on the next slide. We will see that this is the main Dalma group for the heart. And I'll talk about what is a Dalma group and why there's a Dalma group for the heart in just a minute. The other options we can do is bleeding or bloodletting at the Sihuar points. The Sihuar points are the four flower points. So there are a number of them. The points here are Sihuar Shang and Sihuar Zhong. So the upper four flowers and the middle four flowers. And we'll also talk about why those out of the other points in the, in the group of points that are called the four flowers. Then we have Linggu and Dabai. So because the topic of this weekend will also include a a sort of a brief overview of some of my favorite formulas. This is one of my favorite formulas, although we won't really be talking about that today just because of the, the time constraints that we have. So before we do anything, I want to look at this Zusantong group of points because it is a group of points. And we'll talk about that idea of grouping of points in Dong's acupuncture shortly. So this is the diagram. This comes from the practical atlas. This is the leg three penetrations. And we'll see that these are a group of points on the anterior leg. And so we're gonna be looking at points number 88.01, 88.02, and 88.03. Now the numbering system for those of you who are new to the system is kind of confusing. Um, I will tell you the numbering system for those of us who've been using the system for a long time is also not nearly as useful as the numbering system in conventional acupuncture, but it's for the time being what we're stuck with. My suggestion to everyone is always learn the name of the points. It's going to be far more useful to learn the name of the points. And I don't care if you learned it in Chinese, you learn it in, you know, I've had some students who are Korean speakers and Dong's acupuncture is, is popular there. So they learn the point names in Korean, English translation, I don't care, but the point names will be more useful certainly than the, the numbering system without a doubt. So these three points, let's just take a look at these three points. 
and then we'll come back and talk about them as a group and talk about some of the implications of them as a group in terms of what it means for uh, how we can apply it in acupuncture practice. So the first one here is called Tongguan, which means penetrate the gate. I'll go back and forth from slides. Second one is Tongshan, which means penetrate the mountain. Tong also means to connect with, right? So connecting gate, connecting mountain. Tongtian means the heavens. So we'll see that <clears throat> Tongtian is the most superior in terms of the more proximal of the points. Tongshan is the middle of the points and Tongguan is underneath. This is interesting in just in terms of an aside, naming in Dong's acupuncture, many of the points have this sort of really poetic imagery, just like they do in conventional acupuncture. So on the leg, we have the point that's most proximal. The highest one on the leg is the heavens. Underneath that, we have the mountains. And underneath that, we have the, the, the gate, which is almost like the valley, the space in between something, right? The bloodletting points in Dong's acupuncture on the back of the body. and the back of the neck, we have the seven stars. On the upper back, we have the five mountain ranges. In between that, sort of in the thoracic area, on the on the bladder channel, we have the double dra uh, sorry the double phoenixes. On the lower back, we have the three rivers, like the three the three the three really the three rivers down in the gorges. And on the sacrum, we have something called rushing back to heaven. So it's even on the back we have this image of an idealized scenery where it's the stars underneath that we have the mountains the phoenix is flying between the mountains and on the lower part, the rivers. And then at the bottom, it's where the waters coagulate and then return back up to the heavens. So it's very similar to the passage in the Suen that describes the idea of the waters on the earth going back into the heavens to form clouds that will then come down as rain, right? So these are the three points. That's the naming of the three points. Let's look at what they do. So first the location is anterior lower or anterior thigh, upper leg, right above the bone, right above the femur. The first point, 88.01, penetrate or connecting gate, tong, uh, Tongguan, is five sun above the top of the patella. The second one is then two sun above that, so it's seven sun above the patella, and the third one is two sun more proximal, so nine sun above the patella. If we look at the indications, just a cursory look at the indications, we'll see a collection of different sort of specific indications that give us an idea of what realm we're talking about here. So we see various different indications related to the heart or to cardiac function. So we see heart disease, acute pericarditis, rheumatic fever, palpitations, uh, we see dizziness and flowery vision. Remember that the heart channel itself goes to under the eyes. So we can see some uh, eye problems related to heart as well. Uh, we see problems also though, related to spleen stomach in addition to heart, right? So we see gastritis, nausea and vomiting of pregnancy. So those of you who practice uh, on uh, pregnant women, this is in Dong's acupuncture, one of the main point groups that we use for nausea and vomiting of pregnancy, hyperemesis. We also see problems of the four limbs, four limbs pain. This also brings us into the realm of spleen stomach. Remember it's the soil phase, the earth phase that governs the four limbs. So we can see this point useful for four limbs as well. Just to give you a brief, uh, very quick clinical uh, case, I had a patient a number of years ago who had a who had a, who had tachyosis arteritis, and so tachyosis arteritis is a severe inflammatory condition of the central arteries, whereas the arteries become constricted and it constricts blood flow so much that you can't really feel a pulse in the four extremities, right? So there's a lot of pain and heaviness and fatigue, difficulty moving the arms and legs. So it's particularly uh, it's 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 not a good condition. By the time she came to see me, she had already seen uh, quite a few other doctors. Vascular studies uh, confirmed the diagnosis of Takayasu's. And uh, she would put, put on prednisone for like six weeks before she came to see me and nothing changed the condition at all. So interestingly, this is to some extent a combined problem of heart and spleen in terms of Chinese medicine, which is where we're going to go with this point group. So because there was a problem of the pulse, right? The, we, we are impl implicating heart and we'll 
we're, we're sort of implicating something slightly different from heart. We'll get back to that in just a second. But also because we had pain, coldness, pain, dysfunction of the four extremities, it brings us into soil earth phase at the same time. So the main point group she used, we used for this patient was this point group because it brings us into this realm of what we'll see is both heart or something not quite heart and spleen. And uh, really within a couple of weeks of treatment, uh, and she actually had her pulses start to come back. And at this point, she was uh, completely cured of this condition. And it was through a combination of acupuncture. And eventually, we put on a Chinese herbal formula as well. But that's to give you a sort of very quick clinical like, picture of uh, another idea of what these points can be used for. So before we even analyze the points themselves, Let's talk about this idea of point combinations that we see as very characteristic of Dong's acupuncture. And so in Dong's acupuncture, this is called Dalma needling, right? Or coupled horse. There are lots of ways we can translate this. I'm just going to leave it pretty much untranslated for the time being. All right. That's it for today, Erwin. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed today's class and we look forward to seeing you this weekend. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.